So here we are again. A joy to be with you. It's lovely to have you here, and it's snowing outside, I think. Well, it's still the fall, isn't it? But winter is heading our way. Well, we're going to jump straight in. Um, we're excited. We were talking just a little bit earlier what God's put on Ray's heart, my heart, and just how they fit together, and, and we're excited to be sharing. It does seem, well, today's title you will have seen as you uh, hit your YouTube channel is um, Biting the Bullet, Part <laughs> 1. And it's following in Jesus' footsteps, but biting the bullet in that regard. And uh, anyways, we are looking at 1 Peter chapter 2, um, 11 to 25, actually 13 to 25, but there's this couple of verses that at the end of last week's um, passage that we looked at, and it, it really does sort of fit with last does, week, but it is the stepping stone into this week. And I'm just going to remind us of those verses. Well, a, a few aspects. Um, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts which wage war against the soul. Keep your behavior excellent among the uh, Gentiles, so that in the thing in which they slander you as evil do as they may, because of your good deeds as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. So just a couple of things from there that, that leapt out to me as I was preparing for this work, uh, this week. Um, first off, that word beloved. Um, for those of us who have a little bit of Greek, it's um, agapetos. It comes from the word agape, and I'm not going to go into it, but it's this godly love, this self-giving love, and it's saying we are loved like that. And it's the first time Peter uses that word in this letter, beloved. Um, and it, it, it grabbed my attention, especially with what follows, because it's as yeah. though... Peter knows that what he's about to say yeah, yeah. is going to be a bitter pill to swallow, one way to put it, or a tough bullet to bite on. Mm -hmm. um, this is crunch time. This is, this is going to cost to embrace yeah. this. And he wants to reassure us or to appeal to us, beloved, if you know you're loved by God, then take this seriously. Soften your hearts. Let, let the love of God soften our hearts to, to hear yeah. and to embrace and to, to run with what he's talking about. And, and the immediate outcome, or it's another way of calling us beloved, is to say aliens and strangers. Yeah. It's because we're loved. It's the love of God that makes us different. Um, other people don't have to bite the bullet. No. Other people don't have to go that way. But if we are born again, beloved of God, then this is the route to follow, to follow in Jesus' footsteps. And as people observe that, things happen. Um, changes happen. So I'm going to recommend at this point that you press pause and read for yourselves uh, the first half, actually the second half of the second chapter of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 11 to 25. And when we come back, Ray's going to lead us on from here for the next little while. So hit pause, read, have a little discussion if you like, and then we'll proceed. over the rain. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm really struck, even as you were just telling us, uh, referring to verses 11 and 12, particularly, uh, about the whole thing. It, one of the things it says in there, because of your good deeds, as they observe them, yes. glorify God. And I think a perfect introduction into what we're going to be talking about today Submit yourself. The verse, in verse 13, we start with, Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to a king as one in authority, or to governors as sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of those who do right. And it goes on talking about bond slaves of God. Miles Monroe, a fellow that I had the privilege of meeting a number of years ago in Africa, He's originally from the Caribbean, but he said this, he said, submission 
is the willingness to give up our right to ourselves to freely surrender our insistence on having our own way all the time. And this is the bullet we've got to <clears throat> This is on. the bullet. It's this is the bullet. The silver bullet. That's right. You know, the most important thing about this text as we start is, is what it does is it puts all of our social and political life into relation to God. See, uh, John Piper says this. He says, the Bible is not a book about how to get along in the world. It's a book of how to live to God. So, so it isn't just about how we survive. No. It's about how we live to honor God and to live. See, the aim of life, the aim of our social life, the aim of our political life is to live to God. And we see that, that referred to in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 19. It says, but because Messiah lives in me, I now die to the law's dominion over me so that I can live for God. And, and this is especially important in the time that we're living. As you know, we've just yeah. uh, returned back to Canada. And, and to be quite honest, despite the, the COVID-19 uh, and all the other stuff that's going on with this pandemic, this country, the government in this country, the leadership to which we are to submit at times makes for incredibly challenging times, incredibly challenging yeah. circumstances. It's quite different than when we left in 2002. Yes. You know, 18 years ago. But here Peter gives us a solid ground for whatever form of, this is the word we don't like, submission, whatever form of submission we are required to walk in. It is for the Lord's sake. Yeah. And this submission is not so that we get on well in the world, though we may well, That's right. but it's about, as you said, as Miles Monroe said, it's about how we live uh, to God. How we, live to, how God. we live to God. How we live to God. And let me explain. In verse 9, as we looked the last week, as you and Landon were talking about, he says that Christians are a chosen race, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession. And then he says in verse 10, we're people of God. So, so we're settled in that. Yeah. But then he comes around in verse 11, as you read, that now we are therefore aliens and strangers here in this world amongst the, the social and the political institutions of this world. And while we're in this world, both you and I, um, uh, in different senses, we're citizens of two orders. Yes. Citizens of two systems. Yes. The world with its necessary institutions, which... We are yep. bound by law yep. to submit to, and, but the order of the kingdom of God with its necessary values. Yep. So we have necessary institutions, and then we have, we have necessary values. And this is not because that they're both equal. This is because God is the ruler and the owner of both. Yep. We need to settle it because this is important as we look at submitting to those in authority. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. What is Caesar's, exactly yeah. what Jesus taught us. And when you first see, see what he's saying here is when you first belong to him, and when you first belong to his kingdom, you can be sent for his sake, for his purposes, and for his glories into the kingdoms yeah. of the world. You can be sent there. And in this way, our submission to the institution speaks about God's authority over the institutions. You can look at a king. I had to do this many times in Burundi. Of course, not only with authorities all the time, but even uh, we had the privilege that the president would come into the church. And as being one of the pastors, we would have to, you know, do our, do our uh, honoring thing, respecting yeah. thing, because he was the authority. And uh, it was difficult to do, knowing some of the other things that were going on. But uh, someone once said that this was, I submit to you, I honor you, but not for your sake. I honor you for God's sake. Yes. And that's where, Je where Peter's coming in. He's saying, for the Lord's sake. I, I honor you because God owns you. Yeah. And that's how, when we look at those in authority, God owns you. He rules over you. And he has sovereignly raised you up for a limited season and given you the leadership that you have 
And he's going to be held accountable <laughs> for it. Absolutely. But so, so for his sake, yeah. for his glory, and because of his rightful authority over you, I honor you and I submit to you. And so this very opening verse subordinates all submission on earth to a higher submission. That's right. So whenever we submit to whatever authority is, we are actually submitting to yeah. God's authority yeah. who is over them. We submit for the yeah. Lord's sake. And a good example of this, you and I were talking earlier, is when we're driving. Guilty? You know, we, see, we hold the speed limit for God's sake. You know, for his reputation, yeah. not because we might get a ticket. Yeah. And so all of our driving, this may sound weird, becomes an act of worship. All of our life. All but, of our but life. This is a great yeah. illustration because we all know there are times we're driving and you just think speed limit is stupid. It's safer. Everybody's so everyone, passing me. There's all <laughs> sorts of things. And yeah, it's... But it, how do we hold to that? Exactly. I mean, look at them. They're passing. But another practical yeah. illustration I've found in this as, that can be seen during this pandemic. The other day I was going into Superstore. And, uh, and, and the sign says yes. it is mandatory, mandatory that all shoppers are required to wear a mask. But a third of the people aren't wearing masks. True. Why should I wear a mask? I mean, they're not wearing a mask. What do we do? Yeah. But listen, there's another verse in this scripture that we just read. For such is the will of God that by doing right, you may silence the ignorance of foolish men. Yeah. See, we get our bearings. We, get our, we, get our, we, we, we draw our, our posture, if you will, not from what other people are doing, not from foolish men. Yeah. We draw it from the will of God. As you said, we are aliens and strangers, but we consult our sovereign on how to live. He yeah. tells us what is right. He tells us what is wrong through his word. Yeah. And we even pray it. I still pray that prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done here in my life on earth yeah. as it is in heaven. So when we read in verse 16, it says this, Act as free men, and do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as bond slaves of God. When we read that, we affirm that we belong to God and not the Canadian government yes. or the laws of, of, the, of the land. We are slaves to God and not man. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 tells us this. And as such, we don't submit to human institutions as slaves of those institutions, but as free people, yeah. as free men. We submit in freedom yeah. for his sake. It's a choice. For his reputation, for his glory. So we first see that we submit to government of those in authority to bring honor and to bring worship to God. That's those in high places. But we're going to bring it a little bit closer to home. But before I do, I think it's important. Is there anything that's on your yeah, mind to add? Yeah, I, I just think we could rush through this. Mm. Because I, I, I imagine I could be wrong. But I imagine that absolutely every... I, I, I would like to think I'm wrong. <laughs> but I imagine that every single one of us who is speaking, mm -hmm. that's two of us, mm -hmm. and everyone who is listening. Um, it's not hard to think, well, I know that the authority says do this, and I choose, mm -hmm. I have chosen not to do it. Mm -hmm. And I just think, if you need to, press pause and and stop yeah. at this point to just tussle through that a little bit and at least recognize mm -hmm. and, 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 and don't just sort of sweep it immediately under the carpet to get through the rest of the video. Yeah. Um, but to think about the implications of that, whether it's to do with speeding, um, that's the one that immediately hits me. But other things, like the mask. I can remember getting back from Winnipeg. We were, I'm sure it was Winnipeg, earlier in the summer. Um, 
yeah, in September for Zoe's wedding and coming home. And it's it's a little different from province to province across mm -hmm. the land. So we get back after we've been away for two or three weeks and I'm thinking, what are the rules here now? Yeah. And I saw that sign at, at Superstore. It is mandatory. And I think, oh, that's like some of the other stores we've been into, Winnipeg. And, and I pulled out my mask and I put it on and I went into Superstore and no one else, well, all the people working there, and some of the others were wearing yeah. masks. Yeah. And I thought, there are people here not wearing masks. And I went up and down the aisles until I got to an aisle where it was pretty quiet, and I took my mask off and put it in my pocket. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. What are you doing in certain similar situations? And mm -hmm. what are the implications of this? Because Peter really does make some very, well, it's huge what he says. Well, we're going to touch on that in, exactly. in just a moment because, exactly. because what we want to do is go on to this next section where it talks about servants be submissive to your masters with all respect. Yeah. So hit pause if you need to, but otherwise, Ray, carry on. Yeah, okay. But it says, it says submit to your masters, and there's some interesting phrases in here which we may, not, we may get to today, yeah. we may not, for this finds favor. That's a wonderful yeah. thing. But it talks about suffering unjustly. It talks about submitting as servants. R.C. Sproul said this, he says, we are all servants. The only question is whom will we serve? Absolutely. But, but a, a, an earlier prophet, by the name of Bob Dylan. Yes, Robert Zimmerman. It, it, yeah, he said the same thing. He says, he, he, he writes a song, you're going to have to serve somebody. Yes, indeed, you're going to have to serve somebody. You may, it may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. Great song. See, our existence is to proclaim, as we read previously in the previous uh, section, yep is to proclaim the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his mar marvelous light. How does this work with submission? How does submission do this? See, when Peter calls for us to be servants, we must first acknowledge, as all of us do, and I have too, that this is totally contrary to our human nature. Absolutely. But... But isn't it good that we only have to submit to the good and gentle? Oh, yes, absolutely. The really nice ones. That's what it says, isn't it? We that, should submit right. to the masters yeah. who are good mm -hmm. and gentle. Yeah, good or and gentle. did I gentle, misread that? But also to those who are unreasonable. Yeah, it says not only to those who are good and gentle, mm -hmm. but to those who are unreasonable. Isn't it unreasonable to put on a mask when no one else is? Yeah. Or to keep the speed limit when no one else is? When everybody's passing me. That's right. We've got to chew on this. But see, see, this is totally, see, it, it, it goes deeper. It goes into everything of daily life, of how we, how we, you know, go about our business in the day. It's totally contrary. We don't want to be told how, what to do. We don't want to have to obey anyone. We don't want to have to submit to it. And it can be whether it's in, 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 in see, even in marriage, in family in business, in the church. Yeah. It's contrary to our human nature. But, yeah. <clears throat> but if we can get victory over this, listen, this is where the rubber hit, this is the declaring the excellencies because we've been brought out of darkness into his marvelous life. If we can get victory over our fallen yeah. nature, and live at this new amazing level, it becomes a testimony, it becomes strong evidence that there's something more than nature yeah. working in our lives. Something outside of nature. Something above nature. We say, well, it's just my human nature. No, we're living in an area above human nature is at work in our lives. And of course, we know that that's Jesus. Yeah. That's his kingdom being more than theory, but actually being reality working and through our lives. And he tells us this, that our amazing life as a servant is opposite, so opposite to our, this, this human nature is because, and he talks about the conscience of God, because we're connected to God. Yeah. 
We're connected to him. God is being manifest in us because he's the key to our utterly counter-natural way of life, if you will. It's showing that our Christianity, yours and my Christianity, is making a difference. It doesn't make a difference. It makes a radical Huge. difference in our lives and how we live them. And when we act in this way, it shows us that we're living from a radically different place with radically different values and different priorities and, and a different focus altogether. Now, that, yeah. just, just saying that again just grips me. It grips me. Yeah, I, I hear you. I'm itching I'm, to I'm, jump I'm in to, and I'm say some stuff. I'm ready to repent stuff. again, but please, well, yeah. no, go ahead, please. Well, it's this aspect of if we were to live so simply different, I mean different, but in such simple ways, mm -hmm. not just, hey, I pray for the ill and they become healed. Yeah. I pray for the dead and they're raised. Yeah. But if it's in so simple a way as obeying, submitting to these earthly authorities, it's within the grasp of absolutely every single one of us. It's not too difficult. And no wonder we would be called strange, peculiar, uh, alien amen. people. It's contrary to human nature. Absolutely contrary. And it is with a purpose in mind. Now, I want to get onto that, but is there anything... Well, I, I, just, just touching on that, yeah. again, this is so important for us because, because our testimony, we don't realize that even in the little things, people are watching. Yeah. And, and so when, are we different or are we just are, like are me? Just you like say me? you're different. You say it's important to believe this stuff, but I know you're just like and me. And that's you, been the... That's been the argument against Christianity in the church for decades, yeah. for centuries. Well, you're, there's no different. I mean, you do the same thing I do. I'm under happy conviction at the moment. <laughs> See, we've been called for this purpose. Yeah. To declare the excellencies. Yeah. And, you know, uh, a little bit further, we won't probably won't touch on this today, but, but it, does, it, it, it bears mentioning that as we act this way, it's not easy. No. It's not easy. But this is where it comes in where he says, when we do this, out of our conscience towards God, we find favor with God. And then and, and there was another, another part of that. He says, when you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure it. This finds favor with God. Now, now when I was reading that scripture, I just happened to look in the margin, and I never saw it this way. He says, when you do this, it's not before you do it, because this is what we yes. want to talk, but as you do it, God gives you favor. Yeah. Now, that verse, that word favor is translated grace. Yeah. When you act that way, God gives you grace to do the things yeah. you need to do. And I, I, I always refer to this, but I love the, the definition that my friend yeah. James Ryle always gave. Grace is the empowering presence of yeah. God yeah. that enables us to even be servants yeah. and to submit, yeah. to do what we've been called to do yeah. and to be who we've been created yeah. to be. It's huge. So it's, uh, it's huge. If we can grasp this, Charlie, if we can, saints, if we can grasp this, that our submission, and it's going to be even harder as we touch on this in, in, when we get into chapter three, because yeah. then we start talking about relationships and yeah. marriage and family and husbands and wives and everything. But if we can grasp this, yeah. it makes all the difference in the world. It's absolutely huge. And you might want to hit pause and just chew on that. But it moves on to that last little bit. Mm. You, are we ready to move? Yes, yeah, yes okay. please do. Um, it moves on to that last little bit that starts off for you've been called for this purpose. And, and it, it, it's reminiscent of the verses you've just, I think it's back in verse 10, of, of 
to display. For display this, the you know, we're called to display yeah. the excellences yeah. of, of Him who. Well, we know. Brought him. us out of darkness. That's right. Brought us out of darkness. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, into His marvelous light. I've got it here. Yeah. But at the tail end of the verses we're looking at, you've been called for this purpose to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, to suffer, because mm -hmm. it lists, it, it describes specifically what those footsteps are. It's the suffering that he went through. And, and in the context, Peter's actually saying that suffering is congruous. It's, a, it's not the same in quality or in, in quantity, mm -hmm. the depth of suffering Jesus went through, but it's the same in quality yeah. that we're called to when we submit to the authorities. Because actually, Jesus did exactly that when he went through the mm -hmm. cross. He submitted to the will of his Father, and he submitted his physical being into the hands of unrighteous people. Yeah. He submitted. And if we find it difficult to submit to the speed limit, we'll never get to the place of submitting to these bigger, right. greater right. things. But it's with purpose. It's not just suffering for suffering's sake. Um, it's not glamorous. It's not a Rocky Balboa sort of, mm -hmm. there's glory in it. Yeah. It's, it's just petty suffering about wearing mm -hmm. a jolly mask mm -hmm. or not. But it's loaded with glory, wearing a petty mask yes, or not, because it's displaying the nature of Jesus Christ, who suffered yeah. Yeah. by submitting. And it leads to, I mean, that passage where it describes his suffering, it, it finishes by saying, the only explanation we're given as to why Peter is saying is, for by his wounds you were healed. By mm. his mm. wounds we're healed. We are saved. It's by this kind of suffering that healing and salvation is made available for yeah. others. And, and what this is really saying, or the implication of this, is if we have a heart to see the community around us, those who are observing us, mm. if we have a heart for them to be healed yeah. and for them to be saved, then we will follow in these footsteps mm -hmm. because that is the fruit that comes. If we don't have the heart for the community, don't bother. Yeah. But if we do, so then we should bother about it. It costs Jesus and it will cost us. It will cost us. And then it finishes, for you were continually straying like sheep. You weren't bond slaves. You mm. were just mm. doing your own mm -hmm. thing. You were indulging in your fleshly lusts. For you were continually straying like sheep. But now you've returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. And when I, I I'm like, what? What has that got to do with what we've... I mean, it's a lovely, it's beautiful, but what's it got to do with what we've just been reading? Well, the implication is this. If we don't embrace this suffering, if we don't embrace this submission, then we have to question whether we've returned Good. Yeah. to our guardian yeah. and saviour. Mm -hmm. Is Jesus really, functionally, my shepherd? and my guardian. And if I'm not really embracing this yeah. suffering and submission, then I've got to say, no, he's not really. He's not, I'm not the sheep of his pasture, because I can hear and I know what he's saying yeah. to do, but no, it's a bit petty really, isn't it, to, to be yeah. that peculiar. This is huge. It is. Instead yeah. of coming under the shepherding and guardianship of Jesus. Instead of that, if we don't embrace this, then actually we're aligning ourselves with the ignorant, foolish people, foolish people. of yeah. verse 15. Yeah. Those foolish people aren't like raving, raging idiots out there. Yeah. They're people who actually just have not chosen wisdom. That's right. The person of wisdom 
Jesus. Mm -hmm. They might be really, I might have been a really nice person. I might have been wise in many ways, but I was a foolish, ignorant person. And this is what marks out the difference between the ignorant and the foolish and those who have been saved and who are now part of the guardianship and the the fellowship and the the sheep of our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. We've got an alternative. Which one will we choose? Who are you going to serve? Who are you going to serve? Who are you going to serve? Yeah. You know, just, 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 just one other thing to add in here is, you know, very often uh, we're called to submit, uh, and it's difficult. You know, very. and 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 there can even be in the sense of those in authority being abusive, being thing, and, and you know, our submission. It's important to understand. Maybe we'll get into this next week, but it's important to understand that our submission and our compliance, our coming under, is not indifference. And it's not passivity. But what it is, it's instead a way of saying that the safest place is in God's hands. And that's where Peter's closing this in verse 25. We're we're submitting ourselves, we're putting ourselves in the hands of the one who is the guardian of our souls. And that's that's the step that yeah. we have to we ha- ultimately have to come to, is that we can Lord, Lord, it's not fair, but I'm going to trust you. Yeah. It's not just, but I'm going to trust you. It's so foolish. But I'm going to trust you. I'll look an idiot with that mask on. That's right. But I'm going to trust you. No one else is. But I'm going to trust you. Yeah. Amen. Ray, why don't you pray for us? Father, we thank you that. Uh, that you have uh, been with us today. Yes. And we thank you, Father, that the, the, the purpose that you have called us into your marvelous kingdom, into your marvelous light, you, Lord, you brought us out of darkness so that we would testify, that we would be examples, that we would be the lights in this world that we would be different, that we would be the aliens and strangers, that peculiar people of God's own possession. Father, help us. Help us to understand. Help us to embrace this. Help us to walk in the grace that's available to us by simply saying yes to you and no to everything else. Lord, we commit ourselves, we commit each one listening today into your hands that you would continue to guide and to lead us and that lord your kingdom indeed would come and your will would be done here on earth as it is in heaven we ask this in jesus name amen amen very good so we'll see you next week and remember if you're watching this around the time it comes out which is around october 25th the following week november well the following week a week's time. October 30th. That's no- right. And November the 1st. That weekend, we've got our Friday evening meetings and our Sunday morning meetings. And I say meetings. Sign up early, please, because then we get an idea of the numbers and and we can have a second meeting either on the Friday or on the Sunday as required. But, but it really is if we sign up early enough. So please sign up early. Amen. See you then.